Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show. My notice the inflection in my voice. I'm excited. I'm excited because I'm rocking with a new program, and it's so much easier than the previous one I just was working with for the last six months. But we're playing with it, and we're getting used to it because it is a little bit different. But I will tell you right now, it looks like the, the video quality is more clear, which I like. It's easier to load and upload and download and all that good stuff. Framing is a little bit different, but it's looking good. All that said, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow and ring that bell. And also follow us on our social media platforms at the bottom of the screen. Let's jump right in. Team USA escapes 95-91 versus Serbia yesterday. A near disaster. Up seven, down 17, down double digits in the fourth. Needed Serbia to completely collapse, going 0 for 9 from three in the, um, from three in the fourth quarter. But my gosh, I know Nikola Jokic is good. I know he's arguably regarded as the best player in the world. But the best player in the world cannot beat 11 All Stars. The best player in the world should not have 11 NBA All-Stars on the ropes when he's playing with a bunch of guys you've never heard of and Bogan Bogdanovich and Nikola Jovic, who plays for the Miami Heat. Charles Barkley was on uh, First Take, I believe, or they, they, they reviewed what he said on First Take. And this is what he had to say. Take a listen. They should win. They, they got the best team. They got, you know, they haven't used their depth the right way because the one advantage we had in 92, and they still have today, when they go to their events, they're bringing in better players. He has not used his team properly. We should never be a debate on guys getting to play and not getting to play. Listen, you, you can't. Putting Jason Tatum in an NBA game, he's going to be better than 99% of the guys already in the world, but especially guys who are coming from a foreign country. So you just kind of keep your guys on a treadmill and keep them rolling around. All right, you heard it there, Charles. I was on mute. You heard it there from Charles Barkley. I agree with Charles Barkley. I agree with Charles Barkley in pretty much almost all of what he said. But there are some slight differences. In 1990, we have to stop comparing. As much as I like to do it as well, we have to stop comparing 1992 to 2024. Do you realize that's 32 years ago? 1992 is when the U.S. went to Barcelona and lit the world on fire. Winning games by an average of 43 points per game while players are only playing 20 minutes a game. But this is a situation in which you are watching players that were revered around the world. They were revered. The opposing teams wanted to take pictures with them. Why? Because the international players were not in the NBA. They were not. And the international players are now dominating the NBA. So they're not in awe of these guys. They're not asking to take photos with these guys before or after they got their ass kicked. The guys today are coming to win. And they believe they can win if they play a perfect game. That's what it does take. It takes playing a perfect game and the U.S. team playing a poor game. If they both play perfectly on offense, both sides, the U.S. will win that every single game by 30. They have the talent to do so. The other teams do not. Serbia was in that game and largely dominating that game because they had 15 threes through three quarters. That's 45 points. In the fourth, they didn't make one. 
not because the U.S.'s defense was so good, but because they just started missing. Do I think the U.S. defense ratcheted up a bit in the fourth quarter? Yes. But was it so good that Serbia didn't have a whole bunch of wide-open looks that they missed? No. At one point, Serbia is up two. They get a turnover, kick it to the wing. The dude is wide open, and he bricks it. And the, 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 the U.S. team goes down the court and ties the game. It should have been a five-point game instead of a tie game. Serbia melted down the stretch. But it wasn't because of the, the U.S. defense. But let's say you want to give credit to the U.S. defense and say that is why it happened. Why didn't the U.S. defense play that hard for the first three quarters? Yes, the U.S. has talent upon talent, weapon upon weapon, coming off the bench, all that stuff. The U.S. is starting five is better than all these starting fives by a mile. But they're not an intelligent team. Their basketball IQ outside of LeBron James is not great. I watched in that game them have a, it was an open layup, and I forget who did it, but they kicked it. Open layup, uncontested to the rim, and the man kicks it out for a three-point shot. You have an open, contested drive to the rim, and you kicked it out behind you for a three-point shot. That actually happened in that game yesterday. But the U.S. is not going to win games by 40 on average. But they should win every game by 20. They should. They're that much more talented if you simply play with effort and bring your effort to the court, that's all you need to do to win these games. They brought one full quarter of effort and outscored Serbia by 17 in a game that they got their ass kicked for three quarters. Why did that have to happen? And, and this is where Charles Barkley was talking about Steve Kerr. This is the commentary on Steve Kerr. I think Steve Kerr has been an unmitigated, un ridiculous disaster of a head coach a, a ridiculous disaster of a head coach for team usa steve kerr is revered as a head coach steve kerr has never won dick without great players the one year in his career at golden state where steph got hurt and clay was hurt they won 15 games. They were 15 and 50. They were horrible. Great coaches don't go 15 and 50. Eric Spolstra coached Dion Waiters and Goran Dragic as his two best players and went 500. Eric Spolstra is an assistant on this team. Eric Spolstra should be the head coach of this team. But the nonstop narrative that's being pushed about fit, about this, about why Jason Tatum has not played, why Tyrese Halliburton has not played, why they benched Joel Embiid for a game. U.S. won yesterday because of two guys. Two guys. Steph Curry, who had 36 points and had them in the game at halftime when they could have been down 25. And Joel Embiid, who was a masterful presence inside. And at one point had seven straight points in the fourth quarter. He finished with 19. LeBron James had a, had a triple-double, 19, 12, and 10, I think it was. But that's obviously because they're pushing LeBron to be the greatest player on the planet and, the, and doing all, the whole thing where they want to make sure that LeBron gets his numbers so he's going to have the ball in his hands at all times. Whatever. But let's look at what the response was from Brian Windhorse to what Charles Barkley said. Okay, uh, so there the criticism of Steve Kerr, the rotations. Wendy, what do you make of what Charles Barkley had to say? He said about the U.S. should win and the U.S. has better depth. Those are true statements, but I just don't agree with Charles when he says it's not fair to expect them to be tested. Absolutely you should expect them to be tested. Um, you know, 
one of the big storylines that's been happening here in Paris for a few weeks is Joel Embiid has getting, been getting booed. just about everywhere he goes in Paris. Why? Why is he getting booed? He is getting booed because the French and the Americans both went after him and he chose the U.S. Why did the U.S. need him? I keep forgetting to unmute. My apologies. The U.S. did not need him. They did not need him. Let me repeat that. They did not need him. They wanted him. And then they don't know how to use him. He got benched for a game. Why is Joel Embiid getting benched? Joel Embiid was one of the reasons they won yesterday. But he got benched. Because of what I don't really know. Again, this goes back to the job that Steve Kerr has failed to do. Joel Embiid's ass needs to be parked in the paint. He will be dominant in the paint. But if he's in the paint, what happens then? LeBron James does not have the lanes to drive to because Joel Embiid is in the paint. They didn't need Joel Embiid. They wanted Joel Embiid. Do you think a, 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 French, a French team with Joel Embiid, Wemby, Gobert is a great team? I don't. So you have three seven-plus footers. I guess they might rebound well, 
but I don't think that that makes them that great overall. Let's listen to what else Wendy has to say. Why was it so important that the U.S. needed them? Because we are our our margin for error is razor thin now. We are now <clears throat> chasing naturalized citizens because we need the talent. Because the the the, the, the talent. We don't need the talent, dude. That's stupid. That's a stupid statement. We don't need the talent. We have the talent. Are you going to sit here and tell me with a straight face that Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Bam Adebayo, Jason Tatum, Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Davis. I know I'm leaving somebody out. Drew Holiday. Derek White, are you telling me that this team without Joel Embiid should not win a gold medal with ease? Do you really believe that? You can't possibly really believe that. that that's ridiculous. Name the fourth best player who plays for Serbia, for France, for Germany. I promise you the fourth best player for the U.S. is better than that player for any of those countries. The 12th best player in the U.S. is better than any one of those countries' fourth best players. Margin isn't this small. It's this small because we're not playing smart. We're not playing with effort. You're not defending. These are decisions. These are choices. It's not a skill issue. It's a will issue. It's what you have in here, which goes back to the bullshit in this damn country where people will kneel at the anthem. They don't even know the words to the anthem. They don't respect the country. These other players, the Serbian players, they went to the locker room. Some dudes were probably crying because that shit meant that much to them. That shit doesn't mean anything to these players in the NBA. It means nothing to them. Because they don't even believe in their own country. They don't. They make statements that are so out of whack and out of line. They don't believe in their own country. They don't even care about their own country. Realistically. But let's listen to more of what he has to say. And the world is so comparable. And the wolf is at the door. They've got 10 players averaging between 16 and 22 points. I mean, 22 minutes. He's using the depth. Not only that, it's been the five-man swap outs in this in the, with the same. He's not using the depth properly. This is not elementary school basketball. This is elementary school basketball. This is not high school JV basketball where you put a starting five in and you take all five of them out and put a backup five in. That's not what this is. You run rotations the way you would run rotations. You don't need to pull everybody out at once because you're trying to avoid hurting feelings. Like, what the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about? You don't have to pull the entire starting five out at one time. But that's what he's done, a bunch. These players are better than the people that they're playing. And it's not, a, not even a close, there's not, it's not even close how much better they are. But you know what they're not? It's tough. They're soft. That's a problem. Let's keep listening. Second unit that have been the difference in the first couple of games of the Olympics. It was the second unit that won the game against Serbia last time around. The first first unit against Jokic was even. It was the second unit that outscored the Serbians 29 to 3. I, I just don't think that Charles is on the right page here. And I'll also say this. When the U.S. won the game yesterday and they made that run, they did it because they were playing international FIBA-level basketball. When I was talking to USA basketball officials after the game last night, they were so proud of the victory and so proud of the way all of their, their guys uh, you know, stepped forward. But they were mostly proud that they won it playing the international game. If you watch that fourth quarter, if you can go back and watch it, it was high physical defense, full-court pressure, using the you know the the, the 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 bumping that they allow that was not an nba game so many times when usa basketballs got under pressure they fall back to the nba game and sometimes it bails them out and some all right let's talk about that real fast 
the FIBA game, the international game, the physical game. Brian Windhorse, I don't know how old you are, but I think you're old enough to have seen basketball in the 90s. Basketball in the 90s made the shit we see on international ball look like nothing. Basketball in the 90s in the NBA was physical as fuck. They were street brawls. They were barroom brawls. They were fights. Everything was a fight. So the fact that he says this and says that the U.S. Olympic officials were so proud of how they won the game. Man, oh, man, like you were proud of that? You were down 17 in that game. You were down 16 with a minute to go in the third quarter or less than a minute to go in the third quarter. You were down double digits in the fourth quarter. And you're going to sit here and tell me they were so proud of how they won the game? Wasn't it Steve Steve Kerr's job to coach the physicality of the international game? The physicality that should still exist in the American game, in the NBA, if it wasn't for the fact that they, the fact that they keep softening the fucking game to the point where it's very difficult to watch? Go back to playing basketball the way it was played in the 90s, and I swear to God, this bullshit and what he's saying about physicality, it's not a conversation. If players today in the U.S. and in the NBA cannot handle physical play, whose fault is that? It's their fault. Because everything in the NBA is collectively bargained. Everything in the NBA is bargained. So they're involved in all the rules changes that they claim that they don't like, that they bitch and moan about when they're implemented in games, yet they're the same people who wanted these rules changed, who are complaining when they get socked across the head with a forearm. You should not get a technical foul or a flagrant foul for fouling someone when you hit them in the head by accident. Or hell, even on purpose. If I'm swinging for the ball and my hand hit my arm hits your head, so what? But that in the NBA is now a flagrant foul. You soften the game so goddamn much that you made it impossible to watch and you created a product that when it meets physical play can struggle if it's not having its way the way if it's not having its way on offense and its offense isn't flowing the way it usually does. Because defensively, they just don't play as hard. But that shit pisses me off because to sit here and say you were proud of how they won that game, the the executives were proud of how they won that game, I guess. They're supposed to win that game. By a lot. The physicality of the game, you know how embarrassing it is when you you tell an American that Europeans are tougher? Tougher? More physical? Change the rules of the NBA back to the way they used to be. Allow people to get fouled. Allow people to get hammered. Allow people to get banged. Allow hand checking. Allow all that shit. And in four years, you will see a different product out there for Team USA. Whoever's out there, you'll see a team that's far more prepared, far more ready, far more understanding of how the game should be played to win. Because the way these guys play today, they don't play to win. They play for style. If they win, great but they play for style. Let's keep listening. Times it doesn't. They played FIBA basketball, and that's what Steve Kerr has been training them for for the last month. He's been training them for what? He sucks at training them, clearly, because he's been doing that for the last month, and it took them three quarters to get in the shit split to finally do it in the fourth. He's failing at his job. Why didn't they do that for three quarters? Why haven't they done that for for all the games? They've been playing that soft brand of basketball for the entire entirety of this tournament, and they've managed to win every game. And this time they ran into a team that was not afraid of them and knocked out a whole bunch of threes and gave themselves a great chance to win. 
Stop telling me about how this game is physical. Stop telling me about, oh, God. They responded to the game plan and the training and delivered. They won that game, yeah, because Steph hit some threes. Yeah, because Steph hit some threes. I wish people would actually think about what they say before they say it. I mean, I I, I, I try to make a point to think about what I say before I say it. But let's let's take a look at what some three. I don't remember the exact number, but I know mm -hmm. at the, in the first quarter he had five. Five. There's nothing some about five. Steph Curry hit nine threes. That's not some. Steph Curry was nine of 14 from three. That's not some. That's a lot of goddamn threes. The U.S. hit 16 threes. Steph hit nine. They were 16 of 32 from three. Steph hit nine, Wendy. Not some. They won that game because of Steph Curry. They won that game because of Steph Curry. They were in that game because of Steph Curry. Because Durant made some big shots. They won that game with physical defense. They wouldn't be allowed. They won that game because Steph Curry kept them in the game when they were otherwise they got the, their, the crap kicked out of them. You keep saying physical defense. I watched that game. I watched Serbia miss five wide open threes in the fourth quarter. Was the defense better? Yes, it was better. Serbia missed lots of open looks. They missed three layups to play defense in the NBA that way. That, and Steve Kerr and the rest of the coaching staff got them ready for it. And as far as playing 12 guys, what league in the world does 12 guys work? What mm -hmm. league? Demonstrate to me. In, in, you don't play 12 guys in high school. You don't play 12 guys anywhere. And in a 40-minute game, show me the league where 12 guys works. The only time it works is when you're 40 points better than the opponent, what the Dream Team was in 1992. There is no team that's 40 points better anymore. It's not a, 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 a character flaw. It's just reality. So he jumps into this thing about what league plays 12, 12 players. Wendy, this is not a league. This is the Olympics. This is not a league. This is the Olympics. This is not a league. This is the Olympics. We're not talking about a league. We're not talking about the 12 man, 12 man on your roster being some bum that just graduated out of college. The 12th man on this roster right now is an all-NBA first-team player. That's who the 12th man of this roster is right now. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. And let's say you want to say it's not Tatum. You want to say it's uh, Tyrese Halliburton is the 12th guy. Let's take a look at Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton was 13 All-NBA. So you're... 11th and 12th guy on your roster is Ty is Jason Tatum and Tyrese Halliburton, and both guys were all NBA last year, this past season. This isn't some bum on the bench. This isn't some situation where you can't find a way to get minutes for these men in the second quarter, the first quarter. This isn't that situation. I understand we're not playing for, for ribbons and we're not playing for, for, for fun. I get all that. I, I know you want to win. Don't sit here and tell me that Tyrese Halliburton, as good as that dude is, can't help this team win. This team is predictable. If you've watched them, they're predictable. When LeBron's in the game, he's the point guard. When he's not in the game, there's no point guard. Because LeBron's typically in with Steph, and Steph isn't playing point. I guess Drew Holiday is the point guard occasionally. Tyrese Halliburton is better than Drew Holiday. Jason Tatum is better than Drew Holiday. Jason Tatum is better than Derek White. This isn't some children's game in JV basketball in eight, ninth and 10th grade or JV 5th and 6th grade league or 7th and 8th grade league. That's understandable. Yes, not everyone's going to play. It's just the way it is. This is the Olympics, not a league. This isn't a regular 11th and 12th man on the roster. These are stars. And his inability to mesh these players together, that's on Steve Kerr. If you don't believe it, that's on you. But I know what my eyes are seeing. I know what I know. And I know that I don't agree with the rotations that he has. 
I know that I don't agree with the substitutions that he has. Heck, I'll go into yesterday's game by itself. Late in the third quarter, they were they had that lead down to six. What did he do? He took LeBron and Steph out of the game. And in a blink, it was up to 16. LeBron and Steph should never have come out the game in the second half with the way that game was going. And then he wouldn't play Le- he wouldn't play Kevin Durant with LeBron and Steph until the fourth quarter. Whose fault is that? Steve Kerr has dropped the ball badly. They're gonna they're gonna win the gold medal as they should. But he shouldn't be the coach in 2020. And I hope to God he's not, because I have to watch this garbage again. Please let Eric Spolster do the job because Eric Spolster has a way of getting players to do what he wants, how he wants it. And he has a way to get to players that no other coach that I've seen in the last 25 years can do. I'm highly impressed with Eric Spolster's skills, even though I'm very upset with him half the time because I'm a Heat fan. But Eric Spolster is an exceptional coach. And Eric Spolster manages to win games in the NBA when his team stinks, when his team has no talent, and he's done it. And the one year that Kerr had no talent, he couldn't win fuck all. So what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of what Charles Barkley said? What do you think about what Brian Windhorst said? I, I mean, there were a few more comments after from the other people on the panel, like Kendrick Perkins and Courtney Cronin. Um, Cronin and I agreed, kind of agreed. Perkins did Perkins stuff. Um, but, yeah, man, I agree with Barkley. I think Windhorst is way off the cuff. And at the end of the day, you beat Serbia by four points after you've beaten them by 30 twice. And if it wasn't for a couple of weird calls in the fourth quarter and Serbia going completely ice cold in the fourth quarter, the U.S. loses that game. But that's about it for now. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and ring that bell. Come on now.